Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. <clears throat> At uh, salamat sa inyong pagdalo rito. And uh, I, I just want to talk about ano, about our trip to Geneva. Na uh, kusa na kasama ko si si Secretary si Under Secretary Raul Vasquez sa pagharap sa United Nations. At uh, uh, doon ay nilinaw natin ang government position tungkol sa human rights uh, issues. And uh, we attended th actually three conferences. No? Uh, the Human Rights Conference, the, the Conference of uh, the High Commissioner on Refugees, and the International Conference on Civil and Political Rights. And it was a, a working visit to Geneva that we conducted, a very, very uh, productive one. Because uh, it was over, overtaken by events. No uh, pagwiko, no Thursday ng hapon, alas cinco ng hapon, ay na, hindi na nakapag-usapan yung mas mahalagang issue to sa ating uh, position as a government, sa United Nations. So. That's the basic uh, premise why I, you know, I called this uh, press conference, and uh, I'd like to thank you for coming. Uh, ano po, I'm, I, I'm now open to questions. Uh, Sir, this is a follow-up question about the, your participation sa UN. Sa tingin niyo po, paano dito binago yung imahe ng Pilipinas sa international community? At ano po ba yung gains ng Pilipinas through this uh, activities na ginagawa ng Ukraine? Uh, Una-una, there was no more resolution uh, passed by the UN against the Philippines, uh, unlike what happened before, uh, which, uh, which uh, caused the UNJP, the United Nations Joint Program, to, to be established. Uh, ngayon, uh, we, came, we were able to leave uh, uh, the human rights uh, uh, meetings finished without any resolution being filed against the Philippines, which is very important. And uh, at the same time, uh, Probably the, the biggest thing that we can say here is that uh, the, Phil the Philippine delegation was able to answer all the questions, uh, or questions posed about the Philippines' human rights situation and that we were able to enunciate uh, clearly government policy. Uh, for example, uh, that it is not state policy to, 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 to have uh, anybody killed. Diba? Kasi yung sinasabing EJK, hindi ko government policy yan. We clarified what government policy is all about. And, uh, well, issues on red tagging, I think I clarified that also, which are uh, the CPP, NPA, NDF takes offense at, but uh, it's clarified. Uh, basically, the, the position of the Philippines vis-a-vis -vis the violations on human rights was clarified, and the, uh, the things that we're doing to address uh, violations that were committed because we cannot say that we are a perfect society it happens and uh, it's just that uh, state power should never be used uh, should not, we should never abuse state power we will not tolerate any abuse of state power especially from the actors or human rights violations we do not tolerate that Uh, I will I will meet him with him this afternoon to report on the gains of the of the Philippines uh, on the Geneva conferences that we attended. Um, the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs was very happy with our performance. Uh, by the way, uh, the issue of uh, human rights defenders was also discussed, and I, I told the United Nations that uh, nobody has to, the right to arrogate unto themselves the title of human rights defenders. Since we are all human rights defenders here, I think that uh, it's not an exclusive club that belongs to any political party. It is a, it is a membership of all, uh, as long as you care about the human rights that, that have to be respected throughout the world and throughout the country. Yes, Marani. Uh, so the UNJP, kasi, uh, we're working out uh, transparent, uh, transparent uh, programs on law enforcement, transparent programs uh, that will uh, lead to having a, a law enforcement system that is better understood by the people and that will not uh, allow any transgressions. I think that that's the most important part of it, no? that we are 
working closely with the government. The PNP was part of the delegation. So was the Dangerous Drugs Board, the PDEA. Um, uh, Masama yung Philippine Commission on Human Rights. Uh, basta marami kami. DFA, the, ang mahalaga na nakasama namin doon was the Department of Foreign Affairs because the Geneva Post was the one that helped us. The, the UN per Permanent Representative of ours, uh, uh, Ambassador Ivan Garcia, helped us a lot and uh, their team in Geneva. Uh, makikita mo rito that the Philippine delegation uh, as a team in action, we, uh, which uh, delegation I headed uh, in, in, uh, in Geneva during those, day, those days. Yes, anti-terror law was mentioned, and that uh, we clarified the issues with the anti-terror law, because uh, there were many misgivings being rooted about by civil society organizations on the abuse of the anti-terror law, and uh, I clarified it already to them that uh, the anti-terror law was was crafted to comply with international standards, and that there are countries which have stricter, uh, which are which have uh, uh, which give more power to the state. Uh, with regards to the enforcement of uh, provisions of the anti-terror law. Uh, for example, uh, Singapore, which gives a uh, 720-day period of detention, uh, and then uh, other countries which give longer periods of detention, Indonesia, uh, Indonesia Singapore, uh, Bangladesh, Bangladesh. Uh, there's also Western countries, uh, many Western countries that adhere to the, uh, to the principles of the anti-terror mechanisms uh, necessary to keep their state secure. I think it was very well received. Uh, when we clarified to them that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that these issues were addressed properly and that uh, we, we have a 24-day, 14 days and extendable by another 10 days period vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other countries which have longer periods, we explained to them these intricacies which uh, which uh, actually protect more rights than, than, than most other uh, comparative, uh, comparative laws that, are, that have been passed throughout the, the world. And that we, uh, we really took great pains in crafting this law. And uh, I think that uh, I was part of that. I was part of the Congress that, 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 that uh, passed the law, the anti-terror law of 2020. Is that other issue? Sir, uh, this morning, you your plan, right? Yes, you yes, that. yes, yes. Uh, we'll find out, sino. We will protect the witness to the fullest possible extent. Kasi, I, I, I actually have no knowledge yet. No? Na kanya I, I, I want to be briefed about it. And I will ask uh, Secretary Abalos to brief me later. Sa loob ng bilibid, kung sino man yan, dapat malaman natin. Ilalabas natin yan. Uh, to to DG Bantag. Yes, sir. Uh, ko lang yan eh. I just found out now. I will I, immediately after this meeting, I will tell him to, to, to give me a report on this if they, uh, he has any knowledge already. Because uh, what the gunman said and what the DG knows, we do not know if they are the same. Uh, we cannot presume that. I haven't talked to him, actually, since the beginning. Uh, I've, laid the, I've stayed away from the case. I have not talked to anybody. I have not asked anybody any favor. Uh, I just talked to a cousin of mine who's a lawyer uh, who, 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 who will start or has started representing him already. And that's all that, that, that's the, everything that I have to do with the case. I have nothing else to do with the case. No, I, I, no comment. I, I will not comment on that. That's just something to do with the case already. I will not comment. It will not happen. Uh, I will not comment anymore on other issues there. But it will not happen. Uh, that is not my call. Uh, we are, I, I am a very honorable person when it comes to this. It, it's the president's call. And uh, if I feel that later on that, uh, that I, my, I, I am not any more effective in this position, then I will, no, I will, I will uh, talk to the president about whatever uh, has to be done in the future. Yes, the moment I arrived, I, I called him immediately when I landed, and I spoke to him. 
uh, well, he, he said, uh, he, just, just, uh, he just said that uh, he commiserates with my plight as a parent. That's all. And he said that uh, you just go back to work because we need, we need you. We have to start working again uh, in the local scene since you, you were able to do well in the international scene. We need you again in the local scene to do what has to be done. To continue. To uh, continue. To continue what we've been doing, what we started doing to reform the justice system. No, I don't. Anyway, um, no comment. But I think I'm very, I'm calm enough to face anybody about any issue, and uh, if I, I cannot be baited into to, to discussing things which do not uh, need discussing from me, because since I have said, I am, I've recused myself from the very beginning. Uh, no comment. No comment on that. Uh, we have to know. Uh, the charges have to be filed. The conviction has to ensue. Uh, and uh, if, if it's going to be a plea of guilty, it has to be vetted properly. Uh, the testimony has to, be, has, has to come out so that uh, there will be a basis for the police to act on this matter later on. Because uh, th that, that Definitely, a gunman is not the, the whole crime itself. It has to be vetted as a, as a, a whole conspiracy, probably. Nobody, no, no gunman will be there without a conspiracy. I have nothing to do with that. He has nothing. He, has, he, he will not talk to me about it. I will not talk to him about it. We're holding, up very, we're holding up very well. Uh, my wife, my mother, my uh, children, my brothers and sisters are all supportive. And uh, I'd like to thank those people who have uh, sent me st statements of support uh, on text, uh, Viber text, uh, and all mess messaging platforms. No? I appreciate the statements of support. Uh, I, I, I appreciate the, the support given to me. By the DOJ, and the fact that uh, when when this thing happened, people were worried, and we just said, we just go back back to work because this will not change the flow of work that we have to do, because the deadline, as I said yesterday, in the flag racing, the deadline for things we have to do in the DOJ is yesterday. Uh, we have to really rush to work and finish these reforms that have to be laid out to make our justice system better, prosecution system, correction system. Investigate, investigative system, uh, our system for, for, for uh, uh, pardon and parole, uh, parole and probation, uh, all of these matters that have to be threshed out, have to be threshed out, our land registration, our immigration, things that the DOJ is on top of and has to be on top of to be able to, to guide uh, these agencies which, which uh, actually affect our quality of life as a country. The, the first uh, deportations will, uh, will happen October 19. I have been briefed by the immigration commissioner. Five or six of them will be deported, self-deportation muna to, that uh, they're paying for. Um, there are 400 more in custody which are being scheduled. Uh, China is uh, validating the identities of the persons to be deported if they're really their nationals, uh, if they're overstaying. The BI has already canceled visas of many of those who are working um, uh, working uh, at the, we're working at the illegal Pogo outlets. So l work is ongoing right now. Uh, no comment. No comment. Uh, but I, I know myself. I, I know. Uh, not. It's not only me on trial here. It's it's my son on trial. It's the country in trial uh, in some ways, but uh, it's, it's par for the course. It happens. And no more comment on that. Okay. No. Uh, I have, uh, that's the only question that was asked me by the lawyers no? uh, who I talked to. And sabi ko, if there is a resolution, do not let it reach the DOJ. Let it be discussed in court, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, if it's, uh, it's an adverse case against my son, it will not be appealed here. 
it will go straight to the courts for trial. Mm. Yes, yes. Ang problema kasi sa bilibid talaga, kailangan i-approach na natin talaga. Uh, why? Kasi generations and generations of people uh, under the, the guards uh, of bilibid uh, feel an entitlement to the positions that they occupy. And that the temptation there is so great that it's so hard to check on these people. Uh, a telephone is being sold inside bilibid for the reports to be for 300 to 500,000 pesos. Uh, that is the extent of uh, how bad it is right now there. Well, you heard about the case where we had the jumpers of 200 houses outside the medium security prison had to be cut off, and that uh, many of the guards are the ones who own it, if not all, the, all, the, all of those houses were owned by the guards. Um, we have a big problem in Bilibid. That's why we have to reform our, our, our prison system. And uh, the, uh, not only the transfer of ma maximum security, but the regionalization of prisons is now on the table. Okay. We have, we have, uh, I've discussed this. Uh, I've been discussing this uh, within the department, and uh, with the DPWH for the for the past uh, three months, we, we the design of the prisons and uh, the financial modeling of the regionalized prisons are being discussed already, and uh, we may able be, 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 even be able to build regional prisons without without using the national budget. Uh, we will just uh, we, we have a way of doing it. Uh, we have a financial model for to do this. Uh, we have a financial model to 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 follow. I think that uh, the, the 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 blessing in this is that. Uh, People will be more interested to know what we really are doing here for the country. I think that it's, uh, it's something that the country has needed for the longest time. And we were the first ones, not the first ones, we're not inventing the wheel, but we are the ones who really have, have the opportunity to do it because from day one, the president allowed me to organize a team of people who are willing to work uh, for the changes that we are working on. And that is the most important aspect here. Because without a team that you trust, without a team that you believe in, it's very hard to delegate work. And I, I believe that the people that I brought with me here and the people I selected to, to work uh, the top, on the higher levels, to supervise the lower levels, have been very effective. And we will be continuing to do this, and uh, it will be a legacy-setting administration. And uh, I think that we can be thankful to the President for that. I think that's a human rights issue, but I will not discuss it. Ano to? Uh, ang, ang, ang projection ko kasi, within the next uh, three to four years, we may be able to build a few regional prisons already. Uh, we will work, uh, we, we will see how it launches uh, within the next uh, 20 months. Because we're just finalizing, finalizing the design of a regional prison that will be standard throughout the country. And then the financial model will come into play when we speak to the local government units about it. Because uh, it will take a lot of uh, work also, uh, cooperation between uh, the DOJ and the local government units. Uh, can you imagine? Because regionalization solves many problems. No? You're humanizing the prison system. The problem with the prison system now is that it is a mega prison, and it does not, it does not bode well for persons who should be treated individually, as is the practice now in prison reform. Uh, right now, everybody is just a number. Uh, out of 39,000 people inside Bilibid, how can you just uh, make sure that everybody is treated properly? 
So when you humanize it, when you put a prison number limited to 2,500, I think that the reform will be better. Sa una-una pa lang, sa simula pa lang, may dalaw kagad ang, ang, ang tao na nakapiit, ay madadalaw na ng kanyang mahal sa buhay. That is the first part of the reformation that a person can get when the time comes. libo ang target ko by June 30. Uh, that's the target that we have set. The, the carpetas are coming in uh, more regularly now. Uh, I think that the, the Parole and Probation Office and the, the Board of Pardon and Parole have, uh, have more than 2,000 carpetas now already. And uh, it has come faster, at a faster rate, than uh, three, years worth of, uh, three years' worth of carpetas in some areas. But we've done it in more than in just a matter of 100 plus days. Uh, in fact, these carpetas were delivered, uh, more than 2,000 carpetas were, were delivered in the first 100 days of the, of, uh, the president. Um, this is uh, very rare, in the occur rare, very rare occurrence in our justice system. I think that you in the justice beat are aware of how slow they were before. Uh, we have uh, pending with the executive secretary 318 uh, uh, names for 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 uh, to be set in, to liberty either by pardon, parole, and other uh, other applications of the law, other applications of the law, clemency, pardon, parole, uh, commutation of sentence, uh, acts of uh, acts of uh, race of. Uh, of the sovereign, as, as we call it. Three hundred seventy-one. I, I, pending, paren. But finally, I think that something is being done with the new executive secretary at the helm, uh, who we respect all. Uh, we, we all respect the former Chief Justice Lucas Bersabin. I was with him yesterday. I spoke to him yesterday, and uh, a very positive uh, development for us. Ah. We will uh, we will look at the recommendation of the Bureau of Immigration because uh, somebody in the Bureau has already recommended to me the the start of probably a a process of amnesty, uh, amnesty, because uh, this problem has to be resolved uh, for the for the country. Nila sa Pogo, no? We have so many illegal aliens in this country that uh, have to be recorded properly, and that they are they are becoming uh, they are becoming milking cows of many people who should not be doing it. Um, ano toy? These these are ito yung mga kakaawa talaga na aliens. Uh, some of them are undocumented. Uh, okay, their documents, are, their, their, their visas have already expired. expired. Many of them have been here for years. Some of them from birth. So these illegal aliens, have to, we have to deal with them. It's, uh, it's something that uh, all, all of this mistreatment of foreigners in our country has to stop. Filipinos are abroad. Uh, we, we all pray that all Filipinos abroad are treated properly. So the foreigners in the Philippines should be accorded to the same humane treatment. That's why, you know, that's why sometimes you have to consider all of these suggestions for us. Uh, the, the system was, was very bad before. Uh, if you can imagine that, uh, that many of these documents were, 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 were bribe documents. No? A lot of money was exchanged hands when many of these visas were given before. Uh, let's, 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 you know, let's call a spade a spade. But nagis na natin to rito, inabutan ko na yan. So what do we do under the circumstances? So we have to look at, uh, at uh, this from a practical standpoint, as well as, of course, a national standpoint. Uh, if there is a national security standpoint, we will speak to the military about it. But we will not, uh, we will not ignore any of the important facets of, of uh, having illegal aliens in our country. 
But the more important thing, of course, is the, the fact that there is also international humanitarian law. And uh, you, have to be, you, you, you have to be compassionate. No? After all, what is the DOJ for but to, to serve compassionate justice? I think that is the very aim here uh, that the president uh, has mentioned to me in the, in the, in the past. No? That uh, it has to be the, uh, the iron hand with a velvet glove. So we have to be compassionate in our ways, in our thinking. That is the way that uh, society becomes very, you know, very, very civilized when, uh, and disciplined also at the same time.